Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Maths this morning. Um, I hope you've had a lovely weekend. And we're going to start this morning, as we always do. We've got five questions for you to answer in five minutes. Um, press pause while you're ready to answer the questions and press play when you're ready to hear me talk about them for you. OK, the first one we're going to look at this morning is the first, it's one of the written um, questions. Uh, 53 divided by 3, or how many 3s are in 53? Well, um, the straightforward way of, of uh, calculating this would be to do like bus stop short division. Um, so we would have 53 and then we would be dividing it by 3. So the first part then would be how many 3s go into 5? Well, the answer is 1 with 2 left over. And then how many 3s go into 23? Um, well, that's seven with two left over. So that leaves us with the answer 17 remainder two. Um, the other alternative, what we could have done is you could have partitioned 53 into 30 and 23 um, and found 10 lots that make 30 and then seven remainder two um, would have been one way to look at it as well. Um, personally, I would be using short division as it is the quickest and most efficient method. OK, next question, uh, we're going to look at the first um, mental strategy question, which is 52 plus 16. First thing I would do is partition the numbers um, and then I'd add them together. So if we had 52 would be 50 and 2 and 16 would be 10 and 6. So if we add the 10s together, we get 60. And if we have the ones together, two plus six, we'll, we get eight. We then recombine the numbers and that makes 68. By far the most efficient method. OK, the next question we're going to look at is the second um, written method question, 39 times eight. Um, first method I'd be using is abstract method of short division. And I'd say, first of all, line up your columns. Uh, the ones column, it will be nine times eight would be 72. And of course, you can see that I've had to carry the seven across into the tens column. And then three times eight would be 24 plus seven would be 31, leaving us an answer of 312. We could have partitioned um, again. So if we partition 39, we're left with 30 and nine, and we have to multiply both bits by eight. So 30 times 8 would be 100, uh, 240, sorry. And then 9 times 8, of course, would be 72. 9 eights are 72. We then would recombine the numbers. 240 and 72 would be 312. OK, next question would be 5 twelfths plus 8 twelfths. Um, should be straightforward, this one. Remember, when we add fractions with the same denominator, the denominator will always stay the same. OK, so in this case, the twelfths would stay the same. The only thing we would add would be the numerator. So five plus eight would be 13. So your answer would be 13 twelfths or um, 13 over 12. If you had put um, one and one twelfth, uh, one and one twelfth, that would also be correct. OK, well, the next one we're going to look at is 784 take away 220. One quick way of doing this would be to partition the 220 into 200 plus 20. Um, and then I would um, have 784 take away the 200, would be 584. And then I would take off 20, which would be 564. Quickest way of doing it. OK, well, we're starting a new topic this week. It's a one week topic based on what we call position and direction. We're going to be moving into looking at coordinates. Um, our learning attention this morning is to be able to describe the position of items on a grid. OK, so our star words this morning would be position, grid, units, and I would say squares will be important this morning as well. OK, the in focus task this morning is a young man there lying on his bed. When he looks up at the ceiling, the rectangular ceiling, he can see a fly. And what we're looking to try and do is to try and describe the exact position of that fly. OK, the only clues that were given are that the fly is two metres from the yellow wall and three metres from the green wall. What we've got to try and do is think about how we might describe the position of the fly. 
Okay, let's learn. So, how far is the fly from the walls? Well, if we were to grid the ceiling up, okay, we can divide it up into squares. And what we're going to do is think about, you know, for this position of the fly, we're going to give it a letter that could represent that fly. So we're going to call it F, F for fly. And if we said that each of these squares was one meter, then we could try and describe exactly where the fly is um, from these walls. So, so we could say that the fly would be two units from the yellow wall or two meters from the yellow wall. We could say that the fly is three meters or three units from the green wall. We could also say, if we wanted to, that the fly is three units or three meters from the blue wall. And finally, if we wanted to, we could say that the fly is one, two, three, four, five, six meters or six units from the red wall. So there are four different ways that we could describe where the fly is. Okay, so if this is the fly, the young lady here is asking how fly how far is the fly from the red wall? Okay, so what we've got to have a look at here is what the other children are saying um, and actually which one fits best, who's described things the best. Okay, so we need to know how far the fly is from the red wall. So this young lady here is saying that the fly is six units from the red wall, or six squares from the red wall, and two from the yellow wall. The young man here is saying that the fly is five units, uh, sorry, is three units from the green wall and three from the blue wall. And the bottom one here says that I think Charles must say how far the fly is from all four walls. So the question here is who has described the position of the fly the best and why? Well, the question was asking how far was the fly from the red wall. Now, the only one of these that's mentioned the red wall is the young lady at the beginning. She said the fly is six units from the red wall and two from the yellow wall. This young man here has said that the fly is three from the green wall and three from the blue wall. Now he's quite right He's quite right that the fly is three meter, three squares, sorry, from each of those two walls, but that doesn't tell us how far from the red wall. The young man at the bottom here says he must say how far the fly is from all four walls. Well, no, he doesn't. The question was how far from the red wall, and the only one that addresses that is this young lady at the top here. Okay, now it's your turn. So what I want you to do um, is to look at each of these points in turn. And you can see here that there are four roads. There's road Y, road Z, road W and road X. And what we want you to do is to take each of these tourist destinations in turn. OK, so A, you can see here are the ancient ruins. I'd like you to describe where A is by using the roads. So if I was to give you an example for the first one, then A, I could say it is one unit from row Z and two units from row W. OK, so by that way, I am actually describing how far down from row Z and how far across from row W. So I could say for A that I am um, one unit from row Z and two units from road W. So could you have a go at describing where the other three position, um, attractions are based on how close they are to the roads? Have a little go yourself, press pause when you're having a go and press play when you're ready to come back and listen. Okay, welcome back. So we've already looked at number, uh, uh, attraction A, we're now going to look at P here, which is the palace. And if I was going to use the palace, I would say that the palace is one unit from road X, and I would say it's two units from road W. 
that that's what the two rows that it is closest to and that way i'll be able to pinpoint where the palace was for m i would say that i would be one m would be which is the museum would be one unit from road x and two units from road y and then c the cathedral i would say it is one unit down from road z and one unit across from road y so it's all about just being able to describe the position of each point okay your turn again i want you to describe the position of the corners or the vertices of the triangle you can see here that we have the blue line is line y and the red line is line x and each unit is one centimeter so each square is one centimeter so i want you to look at each of these points and i would probably pick you know call give them a name like a maybe a b and c and i want you to tell me how far away from each of the two lines these points are a bit like you did just now with the museum the palace and the cathedral okay press pause while you're having a go and press play when you're ready to come back and listen okay so the first point here i'm going to call it point a i would say that it is one two three four five centimeters from line x and it is one two three four five centimeters from line y so it is five centimeters from x and five centimeters from y point b is a bit easier it is one centimeter from line x and one two three centimeters from line y and then the third one point c i'm going to call it is one two three centimeters from line x and one centimeter from line y okay you're now ready for your independent learning task for the morning um, i'd like you to complete worksheet one please on pages 151 to 154 of your workbook you will need to use some of the positioning language that we've talked about and used this morning hopefully it should be okay for you so press pause when you're working and play when you're ready to move on okay welcome back hopefully you got through the worksheet no problem whatsoever um, if we think back now on our plenary we're going to go back to the in focus task and it was saying here that using ideas from this lesson could you accurately describe the position of the fly well we're really saying in this lesson that the fly is two meters from the yellow wall and then three meters from the green wall nice and simple have a good day and I'll see you tomorrow.